Thank you. Mr. Mara. We have a motion to approve. Mm -hmm. We have a, um, a motion. We need a motion to approve the addendum to the May 20th, 2014 agenda, section 23, certificated personnel item 44. May I have a motion, someone? Mongan will move. Thank you, Ms. Mongan. A second? Hartman will second. Thank you, Ms. Hartman. Roll call, Mr. Mel. Hartman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. De Prima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Uh, the motion to adopt the addendum passes. Thank you very much. We have administrative changes, Mr. Mayor? Yes, we do. Uh, to members of the public, please be advised that there are administrative corrections to tonight's agenda. Copies of those corrections are available with the agenda for the public, and copies of all the documents are up here on the stage, in case anyone doesn't have any. Uh, for board members, all administrative corrections have been made to your agenda and are highlighted. The agenda that was sent home to board members on Friday reflected all changes from the draft agenda, and each change was highlighted. The agenda that was in your packet tonight only has the highlighted items, uh, which are the administrative uh, corrections. Uh, thank you, Ms. Arangiani. Thank you, Mr. Mara. Before we get into the recognition, we have to recognize someone else. Uh, we have some surprise visitors here. So we might as well bring them up now. Get the approval for minutes when you get a chance. You need more minions at board meetings. The attorney's taking pictures. Is there a minion in the house? <laughs> Mr. Schmidt, would you um, introduce yourself and your compadres, please? I'm not used to talking with the mic on. I got a big enough mouth usually. Um, hi, my name is Nora Schmidt. I am from the Alumni Path Foundation. And my two friends here, George and Stuart over there, uh, they're here today to recognize the swim team. All which swim team is selling minions to raise money for the record board. So once again, we're out in the middle of Old Bridge selling minions as instead of flamingos. So if anybody sees anybody or wants to get somebody minioned, please contact the Old Bridge High School swim team or the Alumni Path Foundation. We are here on Friday in the high school. Thank you. We need, we need you to pose for pictures. Anybody want pictures of the minions? This is your opportunity. They'll be in the hall. No? They'll be in the hall. They'll be in the hallway signing autographs, I believe. Thank you. Did you get your picture, Mr. Parton? Okay. All right, we need approval of the minutes. I need uh, uh, someone to make a motion to approve the minutes, please. Then Everybody? we'll make that motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. May I have a second? Thank you, Ms. Hartman. Mr. Mara. Borsilli? Yes. De Prima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hartman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Uh, motion one passes. Thank you very much. Okay, we're now moving into the section that everybody's here for. Mr. Stibadino, would you like to take over the recognition portion, please? Thank you, Ms. Andriani. The May meeting of the Board of Education is, I would sure to be said, that the educational community's favorite meeting of the Board of Education, because at this time, we recognize the best of the best in our educational field and our support staff. To be an educator in the 21st century is not an easy task. It takes quite a bit of commitment, dedication, passion, and love for the children that you serve and the occupation that you've taken. And just because you hold a certification or a license doesn't mean you can serve the job in the classroom. And these teachers that we are recognizing today and our support personnel have done that and they deserve to be recognized because this year for 13-14, they truly are the best of the best. At this time, I'd like to have Mr. Daly from the Instructional Council uh, start us off. 
Good evening and welcome to the 2013-14 Teacher of the Year ceremony. Uh, thank you all for coming out and showing the support. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you tonight the Teachers of the Year throughout the Old Bridge School District. It is a night to recognize, appreciate, and celebrate the great teachers in our district. The dedication to their craft of teaching is commendable and the fact that their peers have nominated them is one of the greatest honors one colleague can receive. I would also like to thank the Instructional Council members for their diligent participation in the final selection process. I also want to send another thank you out to the PTA President's Council who partners with us in this endeavor to provide the refreshments. At this time, I would like to call up Mr. Chris McHugh, Principal, Carpenter, Carpenter School. On a housekeeping note, I would ask that uh, for our TV audience, that all members speaking to the microphone stay back at least six inches so there's not a lot of reverb, and the teacher recipient stand as close as possible so you capture it on the television screen. <laughs> I'm joined at the podium, Carpenter School's PTA President, Kelly Vitale, and M. Scott Carpenter's Teacher of the Year, Jody Rosenblum. <laughs> For the past 17 years, Mrs. Rosenblum has touched the lives of so many students at Carpenter Elementary School. She has high expectations for her student and students and does everything possible to make sure that they reach their goals and their expectations here. Her classroom is student-centered, and very supportive. Mrs. Rosenblum has a very special way of making sure that every student in her class feels important. Mrs. Rosenblum, for the past 10 years, has run a very special program at Carpenter Elementary School, the Caring Listeners Program. Every Tuesday morning, senior citizens and former Old Ridge teachers come to Carpenter Elementary School and work one-on-one -on -one with our fourth grade students in the library. They really enjoy the opportunity to work together, to read with each other, and more importantly, just talk with each other. Mrs. Rosenblum has been a mentor to teachers in our building. She is our math and focus lead teacher, and she's a faculty advisor to our PTA talent show. Now, my favorite part of this speech is I get the opportunity over the last couple of days to go see Mrs. Rosenblum's students and pull them out into the hallway. And I always enjoy to hear what they have to say. And every one of her students that I spoke to, the first words out of their mouth was, she is really nice. Followed by, she makes learning fun. This one I thought was very good, encouraging. Helpful, if we're struggling with something, she comes over and makes sure that we understand it and gives us the support. And lastly, she has a good heart. My favorite thing is I have the opportunity to walk by or stop in her classroom, and I love to see when she sits on the carpet with her students gathered in front of her on the ground, and they just enjoy every moment when she reads to them. I know I speak on behalf of the students, the staff, and the entire Carpenter School community. Mrs. Rosenblum, we are so lucky to have you. We appreciate everything you do, and congratulations on this award. At this time, I'd like to call up Dr. Ferry, Principal of Cheesequake Elementary School. Congratulations, Mrs. by Sarah Sandler, Cheesequake's 2014 Teacher of the Year, and Mrs. Joe Keefe, the PTA President. It's an honor tonight to be able to speak about a former Old Bridge graduate and Cheesequake Teacher of the Year, Ms. Sarah Sandler, joined tonight by her husband, sons, parents, sister and family, friends, and Cheesequake family. A noteworthy moment this year occurred during one of my unannounced observations of Ms. Sandler. While I nearly always observe math or English lessons, lessons, I happened to unexpectedly visit Ms. Sandler during a health lesson on the digestive system. <laughs> Though Ms. Sandler never could have anticipated me to observe a health lesson, it was extraordinary. The extensive planning noted, materials used, perfectly timed infusion of technology, 
and questioning techniques were all picture perfect. Her 10-year-old students radiated with enthusiasm and looked more like pre-med students than fourth graders. As I watched their arms nearly popping out of their sockets trying to answer questions, I knew they were not trying to impress the principal sitting in the room. Instead, I knew I was witnessing a daily occurrence and that these students wanted nothing more than to please and impress the teacher who inspires them daily. The precision and science in Ms. Sandler's teaching is laudable. Yet what best characterizes the extraordinary teacher that is Sarah Sandler is the warmth that emanates from her and her commitment and success in reaching all of our students, including challenging ones. Great teaching is both an art and a science, but in my opinion, the art in teaching requires the heart of teaching. Ms. Sandler has it all. As I observed her teach that day last fall, I found myself thinking, I wish my son went to this school and had Ms. Sandler as his teacher. If it were possible to bottle that special quality, that warmth, care, sincerity, passion, and concern that sets Ms. Sandler apart, I would offer that potion to every college graduate finishing a teaching degree. While there is no such thing as a special potion, Ms. Sandler's unbridled care and concern for every one of her students creates magical results. The main reason we are now a national school of character is because of teachers like Ms. Sandler who passionately lead by example through the great character in her daily actions. As just one of dozens of examples, Ms. Sandler and one of her students cut off most of their hair during an assembly and donated it to the Locks of Love. As a direct result, an additional staff member and nine other Cheesequake students voluntarily chose to cut off their hair to donate to children with cancer and followed in her inspirational footsteps. Ms. Sandler, thank you for serving as a beacon of inspiration for Cheesequake students, for all of your colleagues, including me, for the Old Bridge community and the teaching profession, and may you and your family and friends relish in this most deserved honor, honoring your excellence in the science, art, and heart of teaching. At this time, I'd like to call to the podium Dr. Suzanne Neskowitz, principal of Cooper Elementary School. joined here this evening with Mrs. Uh, Kelly Ann Silvestri, the PTA president from Cooper School. I have the privilege this evening to introduce Cooper School's Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Kim Sautner. Kim is an Old Bridge girl and graduated Madison Central many moons ago. She is now married to Officer Frank Sautner and lives in Keensburg with their two sons, Frank and Joseph, and their mastiffs, Brutus and Cleopatra. <laughs> Kim is the feelings lady at Cooper School. Simply put, that means she's the guidance counselor, the one who everyone goes to with their problems. Most of you in the audience tonight recall having guidance counselors in high school. This was the person that helped you pick out your class schedule each year, guided you through the application process for jobs and colleges, and occasionally called you down to the office if your grades were sliding, or act as a buffer if you were having difficulty with a teacher. Well, the Old Bridge Board of Education, under the guidance of Donna Kibler and the help of Karen Longo, went one step further when and they thankfully put guidance counselors into all of the elementary schools. And that's how Cooper School got to know Kim Sautner. Kim is everyone's friend, both student and adult. She has taken it upon herself to be on lunch duty outside, the dreaded job for all teachers. But Kim likes being out there with the kids. She sees them in an unstructured environment and watches their interactions and then designs lessons to be used in class or during lunch bunch to guide the children to make better decisions. After Kim leaves Cooper, she either goes home to her family or to her private practice as a social worker. Yes, Kim is a very busy lady. Besides the three handsome men in her life, Kim's mom and dad are here to celebrate with us. Congratulations, Rose and John. You have raised an outstandingly beautiful, intelligent, and charismatic daughter. Mr. and Mrs. Watkins have four other children besides Kim. There's Kathleen, Kim's twin sister, followed by Julie, John, and Christopher. Speaking of Kim's family, I'd like to give a little plug to Kim's latest venture. Kim and her family are opening Brownstone Bagel and Subs on Main Street in South River. 
So if you mention Cooper School, you might get a discount, right? <laughs> yes, Kim is a very busy lady, and we at Cooper School love and appreciate her for all the wonderful things she does for Cooper kids and staff. Congratulations, Kim. Thank you for all you do for Cooper, and even more so for being my friend. I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Tony Arrico, the principal from Grissom School. <clears throat> Good evening. It is my honor and privilege to stand before you tonight to introduce the 2013-2014 Virgil I. Grissom Elementary School Teacher of the Year. As I sat in my office trying to figure out the best way to describe and highlight the wonderful professional that is Grissom's recipient this year, two separate movie characters came to mind. Ironically, they're both played by the same actress. The first of these movie characters is Mary Poppins. In the movie, there is a family where things are going just status quo with not much life and energy. The children, Jane and Michael, are in need of a new nanny and have their own ideas about what sort of caretaker they should have while the parents are insistent on someone strict for the job. Luckily, on a windy day, Mary Poppins floats down with her umbrella and suitcase and appears at their doorstep. The family finds out that she is the answer to all of their prayers, but in the most peculiar way. Mary Poppins takes the children on, a magical, on many magical and memorable adventures, but Jane and Michael aren't the only ones she has a profound effect upon. Even grown-ups can learn a lesson or two from the nanny who advises that anything can happen if you let it. This teacher comes to school every day, blocks out whatever may be going on in her personal life or society as a whole, and with a big smile on her face, walks into a classroom with her bag of tricks, songs, stories, and gadgets. She takes these little second graders who come from all different types of homes with different expectations on a new magical ride each and every day. She has this big carpet in the back of the room, and no matter what time of day I pop in, I see her and her students taking a magical carpet ride to a far off land, learning all the way there and all the way back. When the carpet lands back on the floor in room three at Grissom School, no, not one child wants to hop off. The esteemed actress, Julie Andrews, also portrayed Farlong Maria from Roger and Hammerstein's The Sound of Music. This film is about a young woman who leaves an Austrian, I'm not gonna ask you to sing, <laughs> an Austrian convent to become a governess to the seven children of a naval officer widower. When she arrives at the Von Trapp estate, Maria discovers that Captain Von Trapp keeps it in strict ship shape order, uses a whistle to summon her children, and dresses his children in sailor suit uniforms. The children eventually warm up to her, her free spirit, and she teaches them the joy and importance of life through song, dance, running, and playing. Again, this is directly consistent to how Grissom's recipient conducts her classroom. The recipient takes these wonderful, talented children, molds them through love, confidence, and motivation, all surrounded by a delightful smile. As all of you teachers in the audience and at home know that a great teacher, a true teacher, is more of an actress or an actor than anything else. Our recipient here at Grissom uses it all, whether it's a spoonful of sugar like Mary Poppins,